non-human primates are like the canary in the coal mine. If we continue to destroy, degrade, and pollute natural environments, then in the next 25 or 50 years, non-human primates won't survive. If monkeys can't live in these habitats, eventually humans won't be able to live in these habitats either. My name is Paul Garber, and I'm a biological anthropologist and a professor emeritus in the Department of Anthropology and the program in Ecology, Evolution, and Conservation Biology at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. My colleagues and I wanted to examine the status of primate conservation in the four primate richest countries in the world, and those are Brazil, Madagascar, Indonesia, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Primates are found in 90 countries worldwide, but these countries combined harbor about 65% of all primate species. Um, and many of these species are endemic. They're found in, those, in that country and nowhere else on Earth. We were interested in looking at the current effects and in trying to anticipate the future effects of deforestation, how this would affect primate populations in these four primate richest countries, and then how this would result or affect the extinction crisis facing primates in these four countries. We used a number of international databases that included information on primate abundance, primate distribution in these four countries, the locations of protected areas, to develop a, a model to look at the future spatial conflict between the current distribution of non-human primates and the expected future agricultural expansion. And that is very important because that allows us to predict which primate populations where their habitats are likely to be altered due to the expansion of agriculture. We modeled projected agricultural expansion in each of these four countries to the end of the century. 60% of the primate species in these primate richest countries were threatened with extinction. They're either vulnerable, endangered, or, or critically endangered. Only between 14 and 38% of these primate species are actually living in protected areas. So most of these primates have no protection, and therefore their populations are very vulnerable. Some of the drivers of primate decline differ in different countries. Now, many of the drivers are the same, and the main driver is really human population size. In 1950, there were about 2.5 billion people on this earth. Today, there are 7.8 billion so the population has tripled, and by the end of the century, the expectation is close to 12 billion people. So as human populations increase, there's a growing demand for food and the extraction of natural resources. We're at a moment where if we don't act now to change this dynamic, we're going to lose many of these primate species. Ideally, we would like our article to be a, a step for global activism, to educate both the consumer nations, ourselves, and educate people living in these primate habitat countries um, to how important it is uh, to sustain these environments. We need to restore forests and habitat. And that's one of our goals now is to develop an action plan with scientists, government officials, international agencies in these countries, and to educate people so that they can be empowered. We'd like to translate some of our results into local languages to empower global citizens across the world to make conservation a priority. There are many figures in our manuscript that could be used by instructors in classrooms and communities to show the trends, the basic trends of deforestation, agricultural expansion, primate population declines. Conservation can only be effective if international corporations and consumer nations 
understand the impact that we're having on, on the environment. It involves change, and change is often difficult for people, but we are at a tipping point. There will be a mass extinction event in the next 25 years, unless we change the way we do business. If we can work together, and if we can change our behaviors just a bit, then we can make a tremendous difference. And we need to become activists, all of us.